Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and every last one of us should be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I can't do it. I can't go out a day without speaking to Jesus. Without me pouring my heart out to him, just want to say this, thank you. Just thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Jesus, for my health today. Thank you, Jesus, for my strength today. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm able to worship you and praise you today. I just want to say thank you. I don't want anything else, Jesus, but I just want to say thank you that you gave me another chance, that you gave me another opportunity, that you gave me another chance for me to do it back over again. I just want to say thank you for how worthy you are. Thank you for how good you are. Thank you for how amazing you are. I just want to say thank you. That's why I'm always encouraging my courage, my brothers and sisters, that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he has us in the palm of his hands. And he is working everything out to his perfect will. That's how good he is. That's how amazing he is. That's how wonderful he is. That's why I love him the way I do. That's why I praise him the way I do. That's why I glorify his name, hallelujah, the way that I do. That's how good he is. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. To be praised. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, to your life, or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. His arms are open up wide. Please return back to your first love. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you all thanks, giving you all praise, giving you all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you're ordering our steps. We thank you, Father God, for your guidance and your direction. We thank you, Father God, because you always make time for us, God. We thank you, Father God, because you're always available for us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because you're always there, God, with nobody else there, God, but you are always there, God. You are good, Father. You are amazing, Father. You are perfect, Father. You are all the day and a little bit more, Father, God. And we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, Father God, for the love that you continue to give us. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for how patient you are with us. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your love that you continue to pour down on us, God. We just thank you, Father God, that we was able to talk to you today, God, that we was able to pour our heart into you right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing right now. We thank you, Father God, for this blessing that we're going to receive this season, this breakthrough that we're going to receive this season, this miracle that we're going to receive this season. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you open up doors for us in this season. We thank you, Father God, how you're going to put us at the right place at the right time in this season. We just thank you, Father God, for the rain that's going to rain down our harvest in this season. We just thank you, Father God, how you're going to blow our mind in this season. Father God, how you're going to amaze us in this season. We just thank you, Father God, how you're going to put us at the right place at the right time, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the connection next and for the resources, Father God, that you're going to bless us with in this season, Father God. And Father God, we give you all the thanks for in advance. We give you the praise for in advance, and we give you the glory, Father God. Oh, we have the Father God, allow your love continue to move to this place. Your presence in the angels right now today, Father God. Oh, we have the Father God, it's not too hard for you, it's not too difficult for you, Father God. Oh, Father God, this is your time, this is your moment. 
But I know for a fact that you're about to show up. That I know for a fact that you're about to show out. I believe and I declare and decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will and you shall get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Let, your, let it be magnified right now today, God, because it's done today. I claim it today. I receive it today. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, all but Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my sister's homes, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Holy Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to move through this place like you never moved before. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to touch every last one of your sons, your daughters' hearts right now today. Open their eyes so they can see whatever it is they need to see for you right now today. Open their ears so they can hear whatever it is, God, they need to hear for you right now today, God. I'm asking, Father God, for clarity for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for discernment for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to move supernaturally in my brothers and sisters' life right now today. Father God, restore everything to my brothers and sisters, what the enemy, what the enemy has taken from my brothers and sisters right now today. Oh, Father God, I know that you're going to reward them, Father God, tenfold right now today. Oh, Father God, I know that you got them in the palm of your hand. Heavenly Father God, just let your sons and your daughters know that they ain't got to worry no more. Let them know they ain't got to stress no more. Let them know, Father God, that you already got to figure it out. Let them know, Father God, that it's already done. Let them know, Father God, that they can relax in your word, hallelujah, and they can relax in your promises, Father God. That's how amazing you are. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel. Right here in my brother's homes, right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's homes, right here in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are comforted. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds, so we hear your soft, still voice right now today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before, so we catch the Holy Ghost fire. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to touch every last one of my brothers and sisters right now today and lighten them right now today. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sin today. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins no more. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am. Just want to say thank you. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for praise. I'm available for service. But most of all, Jesus, I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and fruit of my lips about you, Jesus. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I'm, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I call upon your name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory and hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know who this word is for today. I don't know who God is trying to get someone's attention today. He's trying to tell somebody something today. But what he is telling somebody today, you know exactly who you are. He said, you better not do that. You're moving too fast. And you're moving too quick. God said, you're getting too excited for something that it might possibility blow up in your face. Because God said, he had not gave me the answer to what you asked for. He heard your prayer, but let God give you the green light. Do not make your own green light. Because every time when we make our own green light, it always ends up in the red light. It always ends up 
and a disaster. And I don't know who it is, but he said, you better sit there. You better wait on me. Let me guide you. Let me direct you. Let me lead you. Because I'm going to tell you right now today, if you move too fast, and if you move too quick, it's going to come back to bite you. And you got to learn how to deal with that and live with it. And I know the first thing you're going to say, but God, why did you let me do this? And God's word is going to say, I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to go over there. I didn't tell you to leave him to be with her. I didn't tell you to leave her to go be with him. I didn't tell you to leave that job. I didn't tell you to leave that city. I didn't tell you to leave that state. You did it because you were so quick in a hurry and you wanted things done on your way and you wanted things done on your time. But God does not work on our time. God does not work in our ways. He works in his own ways in his own time. So I'm telling the best thing that you can do right now today. I don't know who God is talking to today. I don't know who he's trying to speak to today. But he said you better make the biggest mistake of your life. He said, you better learn how to wait. I'm trying to tell you. You got to wait on the Lord. Because if you wait on him, you'll never go wrong. When you wait on him, he's going to lead you down the right path. When you wait on him, he's going to direct your footsteps. When you wait on him, he got the answer. He got the key. He got the problem. He got the solution. Our job is to wait on him. But no, we're too hard-headed. We never want to wait on God. We want things done our way. And every time we want things done our, done our way, we end up with, with a soft butt. You know we end up with a soft butt? Because we're too hard-headed. We're too managed. And we don't want to listen. And we don't want to wait. And soon when it's blow up in our face, and as soon we get to a, our destination or our situation, whatever it may be, we get unhappy. It might, like, it might look good for the minute. But as the days go on, we start to wonder why things start to wither. Because God said, you didn't wait on me. That's why that job situation didn't work out, my brothers and sisters. That's why that relationship that you were so quick to be in with him and her, that's why it didn't work out, my brothers and sisters. That's why that friend situation did not work out, my brothers and sisters. That's why y'all left one state. Y'all left one state that everything was going good, but you had to go travel to another city. You had to go to another state because somebody told you they were doing big things over there. And because they were doing big things for them, does not mean it was going to do big things for you. And the moment you went over there, you were so excited, you realized, they said, oh, welcome to the big thing that you were talking about. Welcome to the thing that you said was popping. See, it might have been big for them. It could have been popping for them, but you got to understand what big means to them. You got to understand what popping means to them. See, their mindset could have been small, but see, you were looking at something big. You were looking at something extravagant. You were looking at something huge, but see, in their mind, they were looking up nothing big. They was not looking for anything extravagant. They were not looking for more than enough, and that's where you went wrong at. Because you went on he say, she say. You went on what somebody has told you. You went on what some, some, something sound good, but you didn't hear from the Lord. Now, did you? I know what you're talking about, my brother and sister. I've been there before, too. I put myself in a, in a situation, and I said, you know what? I should have smacked myself because I was better off where I was. I found a way that on Jesus, maybe, at that time, I wouldn't have been unhappy. If I would have waited on Jesus, maybe my situation would never crumble the way that it did. I had to live in that mess. I had to live in that funk because there was not God attention for me to be at. God didn't want me to be in that situation. God didn't want me to be in that place. And I had to learn to live. I had to humble myself and say, God, I promise you the next time I'm going to do it. Because he told me to go somewhere else. But I was just like Jonah said, nah, God, I don't think that's the right place. I don't think that's the right move. So I went to the other place. And by me going to the other place, it wasn't the right place. It wasn't the right move. I made the biggest mistake not to listen. I made the biggest mistake not waiting on Jesus. And somebody is about to do it right now today. I don't know who it is. But God is giving you a warning right now. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know this word for my brothers or my sisters, but for somebody right now today. 
He's giving you a heads up right now today. He's talking to you right now. You know exactly who you are. He said, don't you do it. That's going to be the biggest mistake that you ever can do. Don't go back to something that God don't want you to be in. Don't go somewhere that God did not tell you to go. Don't be and hang with someone that God's not telling you to be with because God will reveal it to you where he wants you to go. God will reveal it to you where he wants you to do. God will reveal it to you who he wants you to be with. If Jesus has not shown that to you yet, do not make a mirage in your own head. You know where, oh, I know God wants me to do this because that's going to be your downfall. And that's going to be your biggest mistake listening to your own understanding. Don't you do it. I'm telling you right now. He's giving you a heads up right now. He's giving you a warning right now. He's telling you to stop the brakes right now. He's telling you to wait on me. Let me give you the green light. He said, he know how long you've been waiting. And we all can be stubborn because we made a flesh. Every last one of us, we can be stubborn. We can be hard head. But Jesus is saying, this ain't the time to be hard head right now. He's saying, this ain't the time to be stubborn right now. He said, I need you to listen to me. And I need you to understand what I'm trying to show you. I need you to understand what I'm trying to tell you. If you make that dummy move, which I think that, which I'm hoping that you don't do. But if you do, the moment you call that to me, it ain't me punishing you. It's me letting you know you made a mistake. And you're going to have to learn how to deal with that mistake. I'm going to talk to you, but it ain't going to be on your time. Because when I told you to wait on my time, you ignore my time. So Jesus is going to say, now you got to wait on my time. Oh, hallelujah. When I'm going to talk to you. You got to wait on my time. When I'm going to show you something. Jesus said it's going to be about my time. Because it's all the way about my time. But you want to be hard headed You want to take my you want to take my spot. You want to take my place. And you want the thing to be on your time. But Jesus said now you got to wait on my time. You got to wait on my time. But don't you dare do that. Because that's going to be the biggest mistake. That you're ever going to make. And I can tell you when I did it, I left one job thinking I was going somewhere else because I got tired of that job I was at. I wasn't making no money. I was broke. I was struggling. Work, even working overtime, I still was not making ends meet. And it was another job that's around the corner. They paid a couple of dollars more. I said, I'm going over there. Even though I, I prayed about it and even though I asked about it, but God did not give me the green light. God did not give me the signal, and I didn't wait. Because why I was too much in a hurry. I was being disobedient to my father. I didn't listen. I was like I had ants in my pants. I had to go get it. I had to go do it. And the moment I went over there thinking that the grass was green, I even talked a little bit junk. I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you, my brother and sister. I'm going to tell the truth. I told John, said, yeah, y'all guys over there, y'all ain't making no money. I'm over here. I'm doing this over here. Oh, I got this going on over here. It wasn't a week later that laid me off. Because at that time, I didn't know how to drive a forklift. But now I do by that time, I didn't know. And I asked, I said, why did you lay me off? They said, well, all this warehouse of spirits that you had, we thought that you knew how to drive a forklift. Because the moment they told me to get on the forklift and they told me to get some pallets, I knew right then and there in my spirit, I said, they finna call back and speak to somebody and tell that somebody we cannot work with him because this man don't know how to drive a forklift. I knew it before lunchtime because it, it couldn't lick me in my face. Even though I was trying to talk to him, but they kept ignoring me. So I knew in my spirit, I said, before 4 o'clock, before it's time for me to punch out, today's going to today's gonna be my last day working here. It wasn't even 4 o'clock, my brothers and sisters. It was 3.15, I'll never forget it. They called me to the office, and the first thing they did was get my hard head and my vest. I said, I already know what y'all going to do. They said, how you know? Because I said, I see in your face. I said, another reason why I know, because I didn't wait on Jesus. I didn't listen to Jesus. I was being disobedient towards Jesus. If I would have listened to him and waited on him, maybe I wouldn't be in this situation. Maybe I wouldn't have got laid off. Maybe God was trying to take me somewhere else, but I had to go through the pain and the suffering for what? Not listening. And God is trying to warn somebody today. If you're trying to avoid that disappointment, that pain, and that suffering, 
that you're going to call yourself, you better wait on me. Because if you don't wait on me, that is exactly what you're going to have to go through. That is exactly what you're going to have to deal with. That's going to be the biggest mistake that you ever made because you did not wait. You better wait on the Lord to give you that answer. Amen? Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to Lamentation 3. And we're going to read verses 25 through 30. It's Lamentation chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 25 through 30. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. The Lord is good to those who hope in him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the ones who seek him. It is good to what? Wait quietly. It is good to wait quietly without making the fuss. Without complaining. Without so quick in a hurry to do things on your own. He said it's good. He didn't say it was bad. He didn't say it was mediocre. Oh, he said it is good to wait on him quietly because God will never put you in no predicament that is going to hurt you or harm you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will not put you in no situation that he knows is going to cause problems, going to be headaches. God don't operate like that. Jesus does not work like that. God want to give you the best, and he want nothing but the best. But if you don't wait on Jesus, it's going to seem like it's the best, but it's going to be a big old disappointment. It's going to be a confusion, and you're not going to like it. Are you following what I'm saying right now today? It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence. Mm, hallelujah. For the Lord has laid it, laid, it, laid it out on him. Let him bear his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his, his cheek to one who will strike him. And let him be filled with disgrace. It is good to wait on the Lord. It's amazing. To wait on the Lord. It's a blessing to wait on the Lord. The point I'm making right now today, my brothers and sisters, don't you dare do that. Don't make that mistake. Don't make that move until Jesus gives you that green light. I promise you, if you make that move, and if you jump too quick, and if you jump too early, you're going to find yourself in a situation that you're going to want to be in. And trust me, you're going to be in that situation for a long time. And I promise you, you ain't going to like it. You're going to think that God is punishing you. He ain't punishing you. He just telling you, if you'd have waited on me, you wouldn't be in that position. A lot of times, what goes on, we put ourselves in predicaments that we could avoid a long time ago. We put ourselves in, in messed up situations that we can't do nothing but blame ourselves, but we all want to cry out to God. God, why you let us do that? God didn't let you do that. You did it because you want to be God. You think that you knew more than God. You didn't wait. You have to learn to wait and let God give you the green light. Are you willing to wait today, my sisters and brothers? Are you willing to wait on that green light? Are you willing to wait for God's instructions? Or you want to make your own green light? Or you waiting on your own time? Because I promise you, if you do, that would be the biggest mistake you ever made in your life. And he's telling me to tell somebody today, don't you dare do it. This is your last warning. This is your last shot. So you can't say that the Lord didn't speak to you. You can't say that the Lord didn't, didn't give you a warning because he's sending me to tell you right now today about the warning. Don't you dare do it. Wait on the Lord. And if you know God is talking to you and this word is for you, say, Lord, I know you're talking to me. I'm going to sit my little tail down right here and I'm going to wait on you until you give me that green light. Even though I'm so quick and I'm ready to jump and I'm ready to jump to this job, I'm ready to be in this relationship, I'm ready to be with this friend, I'm going to do everything according to me, but I have to wait on you. And God, I'm going to sit my happy tail down and wait on you because as long as I wait on you, I know it's a good thing. And yes, my sisters, and yes, my brother, it's a good thing, it's an amazing thing when you wait on the Lord. And if this word moves to you, and if it touched your spirit today, go and hit Jesus' like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? 
Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. But I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him, always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Stay blessed.